Good morning, Celebration Church. We're so glad you're here. Won't you join us in worship? All my life, all I know, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain high, valley low, I'm gonna sing wherever I go. All my life, all I know, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain high, valley low, I'm gonna sing wherever I go. God is for me, He's not against me. I will hold to the plans He has for me. When I'm broken, He will fix me. I will call on the name.
decided I'm not giving up Cause you won't give up on me You won't give up on me Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out, breaking out Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo Echo in my soul Soul In my soul And 
your family and your children and their children and their children. May His favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May His presence go before you and behind you and beside you. you, but there is just something incredible about fall in Wisconsin. Well, that is when the clouds aren't covering the sun, of course. <laughs> but you know, that cool weather moves in, but when that sun is shining, it seems to just permeate through our cars and our homes and our bodies, and it just, it feels so incredible. So I want you to imagine if that can be our experience as the sun shines. Imagine the experience of God's face 
shining on you. Like I know what the sun does for my body, but I can only begin to embrace a little bit of that description of what his face shining on me must do for my soul. Now you know those clouds that are outside, they are outside of our control, unfortunately. But there are clouds that fight for covering over our soul as well, that space where God intends to shine his face. And that, my friends, is something that we can and must fight against. So I want you to know I applaud you today. I applaud you because you're here. You're in church. You came this morning to worship, to lift your hands, to pray, to lean in, to hear from his word. And I want you to know that you can trust in the goodness of your Lord. He is for you and he's gonna meet you in this place, behind you, in front of you, within you, around you, and he will continue to set your feet in peace, amen. Would you join me now as we pray that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Why don't you take a moment this morning and greet some people around you. While they're doing that in the room, as always, I want to take an opportunity and welcome all of you who are joining with us online. It's really, it's just such a privilege to have you joining with us for church. We pray that it's a sweet time for you. We'd love for you to say hello to each other out there on whatever platform you're on. Um, and as always, thanks for being a part of the Celebration family. We hope you're blessed today. Well, as you're finding your seats this morning, I'd love to take a quick moment and just welcome any of you who might be visiting with us for the first time today. Welcome. We're just truly so glad that you came through our doors or you found us out there on the internet someplace. Celebration Church is one church, but we have multiple locations, which we refer to as campuses. Each of our campuses has their own time of live worship and kids' ministries and communion. But what joins us all together is the teaching of our lead pastor, Mark Gunger, who typically preaches live here at the Green Bay campus and then is watched by a video at our campus in the Fox Valley and of course with all of you who join us online as well. If today is your first time with us, we have one really small ask of you. You'll notice in the seat back some cards called a connection card. There's also a little QR code there if you like to do things digitally on your phone instead. And on that card, it just asks you for some very basic contact information. If you would be willing to fill that out during service and just drop it with the ushers on your way out or put it in on your phone, we'd be so grateful. We just want to send you a letter or an email thanking you for spending the time with us. We'd love to tell you a little bit more about the church in that letter and some next steps you can take if you might like to find out more. But again, we just are truly blessed that you came to be with us. We hope that today is a blessing to you. Everything else that you need to know will be in the news. Hi, my name is Bailey, and welcome to Celebration Church. Here at Celebration Church, we love children, and we love to stand with families as they choose to dedicate their little ones to the Lord. We will be holding our next child dedication at all our campuses on Sunday, October 24th. If you have a little one you'd like to dedicate in the presence of the church, please call the church office or email us at dedications at celebrationchurch.tv. This week is also step three of our monthly growth track, at step three, you'll be introduced to the Celebration Dream Team and the values we aspire to as Celebration volunteers. Learn how you can be a part of the team that's making a difference by serving in dozens of ways all across church life. For times and locations of the Celebration Growth Track or to register for upcoming classes, visit the church website or the Celebration Church app. This year's Father-Daughter Ball will take place on the evening of Friday, October 28th. Dads and daughters of all ages are encouraged to join us for a truly special evening consisting of dinner, dancing, photos, and a few other special touches. Registration is open through the events tab on the church website. Don't miss out on this magical night. Our next water baptism will be taking place as part of our first Wednesday service on October 5th. 
If you've been through the water baptism class or rite of passage and are interested in being water baptized this October, please reach out to us at baptism at celebrationchurch.tv or call the church office. If you're curious about baptism here at Celebration Church, check out one of our upcoming baptism classes. You can find times and locations by visiting the church website or the Celebration app. Thank you so much for joining us today. And please, enjoy the service. This is Celebration Church, but it's more than just a building or a church. We have a calling to be a place where people can find a relationship with God instead of religion. A place where freedom is found and acceptance given, and every person can discover their purpose and experience the kind of fulfillment only God can give. Together we will raise, lead, and empower a generation to change the world. Here, Jesus is famous, and all the glory goes to God. This is celebration. This is our family. Welcome home. Good morning. Welcome to Celebration Church. Let's all stand together as our online community joins with us via the internet. And let's recite together the Apostles' Creed. This is our statement of faith. This is who we are and what we believe at Celebration Church. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who for us and for our salvation was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the fellowship of believers, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Good to have you with us this morning. Quick reminder of how we do our offerings here. You can use the envelopes on the seat backs in front of you to put whatever cash or checks you'd like to give and then leave them with the ushers on the way out. Uh, if Celebration Church is your home church, we encourage you to go online, sign up for recurring giving. You're just basically saying, this is how much we're committing every week and it just take, it's taken care of automatically. You don't have to worry about whether or not you brought your checkbook or whatever. Uh, or you can use your phone. A lot of people use the phones to give. In fact, you can point your camera at that little dilly bobby there in the bottom left-hand corner, and it'll take you right to the proper place uh, to be able to make a contribution that way. Thank you for your generosity. Yesterday, we had a, a day of celebrating our dream team. These are the volunteers that minister here at Celebration Church. And I just want you to know, uh, Deanna and I are very well aware this church is not amazing because of us. It's amazing because of you. You're the ones that make all this work, the volunteering, the caring, the, uh, you know, the ministries that go out. So uh, we are very grateful for what you do. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we were in Sicily, uh, Kind of a, it was a fun trip, really fun trip. This very nice Swiss pharmaceutical company invited us to come, asked me to speak to all their managers from all over the world that came in. It was a fascinating thing. Uh, it was great fun. Uh, they were at Club Med on the Mediterranean, very fancy. Uh, he texted me before we went. He says, look, we're going to be there all week. If you want, we'll push up for the whole week, pay for everything. I said, oh, yeah. So that's where we were. I had a great time hanging out. The weather was amazing. Uh, the people were amazing. I wish all the business owners at our church could have seen and spent time with these people. The culture that they had was truly something to behold. Uh, it was more like a big family gathering and great friends than a business thing. I mean, these people were just a great group that worked together, and we had so much fun with them. They were so kind to us and polite, and it was just, we had a great time. Um, he texted me uh, before we went over. He says, listen, last day we, we want to go, uh, what, Thursday, whatever. We want to go on a bike ride. You, you do bikes? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can do bikes. And I'm thinking a bike ride is, you know, like around the property. You know, maybe down by the water. Check out the old city. There's a, you know, five, six hundred year old city there. The Chifalu is where it was. At. But now, no, it wasn't a normal bike ride. 
put us in a bus, drove us for three hours to the top of Mount Etna, which is uh, the largest mountain in Italy. It's actually an active volcano. And uh, we went up as far as we could go. Uh, and then the rest of the way from there, it was bikes. This is their version of bike riding. And it's, it's, it's like this. It's insane. Uh, and they said, well, we got these bikes. They're e-bikes. They're electrical. They, they can help you. And we're thinking, you know, you push a button and, and it'll go. Uh, no. In fact, someone said to me, oh, we got an e-bike. You can push a button and it'll just take you. <laughs> nay, nay, I say to thee, nay. This, this was only to assist you if you're pedaling. Uh, so, and then we got some just terrible advice from the uh, guy that was setting up. He said, well, just put it in the lowest gear. Well, the lowest gear is perfectly worthless. The battery doesn't even kick in unless you're in a higher gear. And you know what lower gear in some of these bikes are? I mean, you can pedal 47 times and go an inch and a half. You know, <laughs> they're hardly moving. It was going so slow, I fell over three times. And I was sweating like a pig, and I got hard to breathe. <laughs> as, as we're going up, the thing, I just, up. you know, my brother Ed, Bishop Ed, his name's Edwin. Uh, he's, <laughs> when we grew up, he was always the runt of the litter, you know. And uh, he had asthma, and it was really uncoordinated and everything. And, and I sent him a text, I, dude, I feel like I've turned into Edwin. You know, I, I couldn't move, it was horrible. And, uh, and, uh, but Deanna and I were the first ones to quit. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> we ain't doing this, it's crazy, man. Uh, thankfully, she was behind me, or it'd be really humiliating. And, uh, she says, how are you doing? I says, terrible. I hate this. She says, you want to quit? Yes, yes, we should quit. Praise God, let us quit. So we got about a quarter of the way up this monstrosity. And it's, it's, okay, so follow me. Just use your back brake, you know, so we'll flip it over. And, but this, this is not paved. This is volcanic ash and gravel. And usually that kind of mountain biking in the States has fat tires, right? Well, you know. No, there, there weren't fat tires. They were more like this. I guess that's European fat. Americans, we know fat, all right? So we're, we're, we're like this. And, uh, but, and the thing's stepping and sliding again, you know, the lowest gear. <laughs> Chickens and squirrels were passing us. And, <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. So finally, uh, I said, forget this. So let's, let's go down. I said, so follow me. And you just had to ride the back tire and and it didn't do anything it just froze the tire and and you would just it would just slide all the way down it's dragging through this ash and gravel around corners and it finally came to a stop and said, oh, okay let's gather ourselves I turn around no Deanna and where are you and, and I'm waiting and waiting and waiting for Deanna, which by the way, is the bulk of my life here on earth. <laughs> just, just so we're clear. What do I do? I wait, I wait for her. It's, it's what I do and, and I'm still working on it. Uh, the Lord thought I needed to be punished for something, I don't know, but anyway. So, so, I'm, so finally, I gotta go find her. I picture her splattered out in the gravel somewhere, sucking volcanic ash bleeding profusely, and I gotta go find her. So, of course, now I gotta pedal back up the stupid mountain. <laughs> Finding it, and she's there where I left her off. She's still standing there. I said, what are you doing? She said, I'm, I'm afraid of heights. And, and, and I know this about her. And, and I said, let me ask you, when they said mountain, <laughs> what were you thinking? I thought it would be different. Okay, well, now is not the time to bring it up. Let's just move on. I said, just, and, and she's terrified. I mean, terrified. She just, because someone said, were, were there railings? <laughs> no. <laughs> There's the end, when you fall over the side, you know. So we're, guess, we'll, we'll just walk. We'll walk back. So we walked back and finally got back down and waited for all the other people and, uh, that was our bike trip. <laughs> Say, what's the purpose of this story? There is no purpose at all. Just 
Don't ever ask us to go on a bike ride because I ain't doing that ever again. Jeez. Brutal. Besides, that's for people in shape. My shape is round, you know, so. Um, last time I was here with you, I was talking about the uh, well project in Kenya for our Kenya church over there. And uh, we had done a bunch of looking into it and it was gonna be like, more than we thought. It's going to be like $37,000 to do a big proper well that, you know, pumps water, you know, up into these big, you know, tanks on a platform and down here for people, could, the community would get it. Uh, some people have stepped forward now and says, no, no, no. You, you, I know people can get it done for, you know, like five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000. Yeah, yeah. They have that already. Do you remember? They have a well. We put a motor in for the well, but it doesn't go very deep. And that's not, we wanted a proper well to be put in. And I said, we're going for it. We're just going to do it. I don't care. And it takes us a year and a half. And we just put a few thousand dollars aside. Anyway, by the time I got back from the bike trip from hell, <laughs> we'd raise the money. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> Actually, we're like 2,000 short, but we'll figure it out. Oh, by the way, somebody gave me this on the way in. It's like seven, eight hundred bucks in here. And I was hoping it would said to Pastor Mark, but no, it says uh, for Kenya. I don't know who gave it. So yeah. So we're 1,200 short. Anyway, uh, I've had, it's just a bit amazing to watch the generosity. There has been a spirit of generosity that has fallen over this congregation since the beginning of this year. And it has been an amazing thing to watch. And thank you for it. We're very excited. We're getting this done. Get her done. All right, that's my well. Uh, today's message. Yes, I do have a message. This is found in 1 Timothy, the sixth chapter, starting at verse six. Paul writes to Timothy, this young pastor. He says, of course, there is great gain in a godliness combined with contentment. Everybody wants gain. Everybody wants to move forward. Everybody wants to win, right? It's part of our nature, certainly our American nature. And that's fine. But what he's saying, there's great gain in godliness combined with contentment. And then he brings, uh, writes this verse, which is read at very many funerals, very famous verse. He says, for we brought nothing into the world uh, so that we can take nothing out of it. You'll never see a U-Haul being pulled behind a hearse Nobody takes anything with them. We leave it all here. Come in with nothing, we leave with nothing. And he says this, but with food and clothing, we will be content with these. But those who want to be rich fall into temptation. Why is this important? Because we pray, keep us from temptation. And there's some things that you do that actually make temptation worse in your life. And these are people who want to be rich. Notice it does not say rich people. There are a lot of rich people in the kingdom of God. Thank God for it. It's a gift they've given, just like to musicians and other things. Their gift is their ability to make a great wealth. And they keep it all in perspective. How they do it is amazing. A lot of people say, well, why doesn't God give me millions of dollars? Because it would corrupt you. As sure as I'm standing here, it will corrupt you. You think it won't, you know? You say, well, then I'll be generous. If I win the lottery, I hear that all the time. Oh, Pastor, as soon as I win the lottery, I'm gonna give. No, you won't. I know people. You'll hang on it tighter than before. It's just the way it is. Money, ha you have no idea the power this stuff can have over you. And it's but for the grace of God. That's why God doesn't give it to everybody because they can't handle it. Those who can do very well. And it's an amazing thing to watch. And we're thankful for what God has blessed these people with that gift. He says, it's those who want to be rich. It doesn't say the rich people. This isn't a slam on rich people. This isn't some class warfare thing, all right? Those who want to be, I want it, I want it, I want it, I become obsessed, obsessed, I gotta have, I gotta have, I gotta have. Those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. I have seen this many times. It is sorry, sorrowful to see. And then he says, for the love of many, money is the root of all kinds of evil. This is the most misquoted verse in the Bible, one of the most misquoted verses. For it is often quoted that money is the root of all evil. That's not what it says. What does it say? For the love of money is the root of all evil. Being obsessed, uh, all kinds of evil. And in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith 
and pierce themselves with many pains. So we all want gain. And he starts out, you want gain? Here's great gain. Really advanced gain. Godliness combined with contentment. Now in Philippians, the fourth chapter, reading in verse 12, we read these words from the apostle. He says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I do too. I vote for plenty. <laughs> I don't like the need part, but he says it comes and goes. He says, and I have learned the secret. Have you learned the secret? My guess is most of you didn't even know there was a secret. That's what makes it a secret. If everybody knew it, it wouldn't be a secret. What is the secret that he's talking about? I've learned the secret. What? Of being content in any and every situation, whether fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or want. And then he says this famous verse, for I can do all this. Some translations say I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. A lot of people quote that as a conquering verse. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can conquer everything. That's not really the context here. There's lots of conquering verses. If you need one, let us know. But uh, this is really my life stinks sometimes verse. Sometimes life is hard verse. Sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. How do you do this? I can do all these things through Christ who gives me strength because I have learned the secret to be content. Are you content? Are you always living in the world of I'd rather be? If only if... Oh, I could be so much happier if I had a new car, Pastor. I could be so, I can't be happy. I have a lousy house. I, I can't be happy. I married this idiot. I should have married the other idiot. You know, there's always something. People are always moaning and groaning. Oh, only if only. Don't live in the world if only. Learn to be content. I was reading about this study that uh, a university did. And universities in America tend to study some of the stupidest things on earth. I don't know where they get the money for this nonsense. But this university wanted to study smiles. What is the effect of a smile in a person's life? So what they did is they took a bunch of old college yearbooks and they gathered them together and they went through and took a look at the pictures and they started rating the people with the best smiles. And when they got done, they finally boiled it down to the 10% of the best smiles in those yearbooks. And having done that, now their task was to go find these people, interview them, take a look at their lives, see what you see. And they did this. And when they got done, they came back, they said they were stunned how successful these people were in virtually every area of their life. The part that struck me was they said, of all these people, now this is the United States of America, all right, typical American heathens, not Bible college people, of all these people, they said not one person had experienced a divorce. And they were stunned. And they looked at it closer and even closer. They said the correlation is so strong, they proclaim that you could literally predict the marital outcome of people from their pictures as children. Say, well, I'm divorced and I'm happy. Well, you're probably married to someone who wouldn't. It only takes one, you know. But how does this work? Because they say, well, how, how, does this, how does this happen? Well, I'll tell you how it happens because these people are happy in the first place. If you need somebody to make you happy, if you need something to change before you can be happy, you haven't learned the secret and you're most likely going to be miserable. And I always like to warn single people, particularly single women, Girls, listen to me. Escúchame. Marriage was not designed to make you happy. And all the married people said, amen. amen. Yeah. Listen to me. If you're a lonely, miserable, empty soul, for the love of God, do us all a favor. Stay single. <laughs> because a lonely, empty, miserable soul that gets married is still just a lonely, empty, miserable soul. And she's... He, she or he is going to make everybody around them and in their marriage absolutely miserable and most finally just fall apart. It's not about making you happy. It's supposed to be happy in the first place. And seriously, girls, you, you think a man is going to meet all the needs of your heart and soul? <laughs> and the moon doesn't really follow you when you drive at night. 
It, it just seems like it. By the way, I woke up this morning. I had such a stiff neck. I, I couldn't move. It was horrible. And I could move some. Say, so is, is it a miracle? No, Advil. Uh, anyway, uh, what do I felt at that time when I turned again? <laughs> Any chiropractors in the room? Let me know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What am I talking about? Be happy. Learn to be happy. Be content. Learn the secret. Very simply, I am going to give you five pieces of advice how, how to be happy. All right? Number one, truly enjoy what you have. I mean, just enjoy it. Oh, easy for you to say, Pastor. You have nice things. Yes, at 112 years old, I finally have some nice things. <laughs> but I was always happy. When we had nothing, be like a child. Little children don't need anything. In fact, I can't tell you how many times I bought these little monkeys some toys or something at Christmas time, and within minutes, you know what they're playing with? The boxes. The boxes are the great joy. They're crawling in and out of them, putting the cat in and out, the dog in and out. They're building forts. They're as happy as they can be with just the boxes. Made happy simply. Learn to be happy. Enjoy what you have. So I don't have much. Well, enjoy it. And I, we always enjoyed stuff. Deb and I, back in the day, we didn't have anything. <laughs> when we got married, we, we were so poor. We had to look up to see how the poor people lived. <laughs> I said to her, don't worry, baby, someday we'll be poor too. Because we had nothing. It was miserable. But we weren't miserable. We were happy. Just learn to be content. We're always content. Enjoy what you have. Do you know there's all kinds of people that live right next to incredible places and have never gone there? It is stunning how many people live a mile or so from the ocean and have never seen the ocean. It is stunning. They never bother to go see it. I was in Hawaii, Pearl Harbor. What an incredible place that is. Do you know most people in Hawaii have never seen Pearl Harbor? They can look over the shoulder and they can see it over there, but never have bothered to go see it. The tourists come to see it. The number of people in New York City who have never gone to see the Empire State Building, have never gone to see the Statue of Liberty. It's all right there. It's local. They just can't be bothered. This goes on and on and on. Now, at least in Green Bay, most people have been to Lambeau Field. On the other hand, we don't have anything else. Maybe they have more distractions. I, I don't know. <laughs> people say, why are you so crazy about the Packers? What else do we got? I mean, cows. I mean, this is awesome. We got a football thing. Enjoy what you have. Look around you. Take advantage of what you've got. So all I got is a cardboard box. Make a fort. Have a great time. Enjoy what you got. Don't think you can't be happy until you get something else because it will not be long after you get that other thing that you will revert right back into not being happy. So number one, be truly enjoy what you have. Number two, you want to be happy? Learn to cut people slack. Just, it's called grace. Give people grace. Quit getting mad at everybody. Oh my gosh, it must be exhausting to be people who are always upset at other people. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty terrible driver. <laughs> if you ever see me, you'll give some room. <laughs> I can tell how many people get mad and lay on their horn last night. <laughs> and they wave. You know, you're number one. And uh, I'm just tied up and just, ah, about everything. Oh, my gosh. Relax. Check your medication. <laughs> Cut people slack. So somebody doesn't measure up to you, so what? Let it go. How many Christians, some Christians are horrible at this. Because they're so self-righteous and I know the Bible and I'm biblical, biblical. And if the pastor says something that's not quite biblical, I can't go to that church anymore. He thinks A and it's really 8.2 is something. 
Honestly, relax. You hear something you don't agree with? Suck it up, buttercup. Everybody don't have to agree with you. You don't need to be with someone. You know, that, there's, what, how many? 400,000 churches in America? I can't remember that. 80% of them have 100 people or less. Do you know why? That's about how many people you can get together that all agree on everything. Christians were the worst. Getting mad and having fits and cows about this and that. Honestly, people are going to tick you off. Your neighbor's going to tick you off. Your in-laws are going to tick you off. I don't know my in-laws are right there. Everybody's going to tick you off. Your husband's going to tick you off. Just ask my wife. We all tick everybody off. Just cut people slack. It's called grace. Number three. Try not to be overly sad when things go bad or overly happy when things go good. In other words, separate your heart from your circumstance. Here's my heart. Here's stuff. Here's things. This is Marky. This is stuff things. I don't let this mess with this. Oh, it tries to mess with it, but I'm pretty good at putting a shield around it. I don't let my circumstances drag me up and down. I remember when I first moved to Green Bay and came to this church, uh, people were very sweet, you know, but, uh, and it was the first time I was really working. I, I, I'm a late bloomer. <laughs> I didn't start getting into pastoring until like 45 or whatever it was. Uh, but uh, came in, and, and we had a house still in Stevens Point that we were trying to sell. And, and the stupid thing wouldn't sell. I mean, we had it, I can't remember, it was a year and a half, two years. I mean, just, we had two mortgages. That's a lot of fun. All this. And I, I was struck by how many people, they're being nice. But how many people came up to me and said, you must be so upset that your house hasn't sold. And I'd always go, no. <laughs> I'd like it to be sold, but I'm not upset about it. And the more I looked around, I noticed they would have been. They would have been. They would, um, their world would come to an end. They would just be as grumpy and miserable as they could have gone to their house. And they're so upset my house hasn't sold. Really? And I remember when the house finally sold. Then the opposite happened. So many people came up to me. You would be so happy that your house sold. And I went, no. I'm glad that it sold. Because I know they would have been. This is how they live their lives. If things are bad, they're miserable. If things are good, now they're happy. You know, we need to learn to be content. I learned the secret. I learned the secret a long time ago. Just be content. What well, is hard? I know, but I can do all these things through Christ who gives me strength. Number one, enjoy what you have. Number two, cut people slack. Number three, don't get overly caught up in what's going around you. Number four, lower your expectations. So I thought I was supposed to have high expectations. It pulls us forward. Yeah, kind of. I mean, I get that. But on the other hand, most people are always upset because people don't live up to their expectations. And things never go quite as well as they think. And there's always miserable. Man, just relax. Lower your expectations. You know, there's a lot of people. This is going to sound weird. But there's a lot of books and churches and ministry, Christian ministry, about marriage. And I'm convinced a lot of them wind up doing more harm than good. Because what they do is they start describing the perfect man and the perfect woman. And of course, nobody has that. So they read these things and then they're miserable, right? I can know how many women I've talked to, mad as a hornet. Why? My husband's not being the spiritual head of the house. And they just have a cow about it. Just relax. What does that even mean? Well, he ought to do this and he ought to do that. Where'd you learn that? Oh, I heard it on the radio. Stop We're giving people these exaggerated ideas of how things are going to be. Look, life is hard. The truth is what your spouse does is probably just going to irritate you till the day you die. The good news, you die. Lower your expectations. Everything doesn't have to be perfect all the time. In fact, I expect things not to be perfect. That's my expectation. <laughs> Seriously, when things go really good for us for a while, I get a little nervous. Ask Deanna. I said, I'm getting a little creeped out. She says, why? Everything's going really good. <laughs> Something's going to happen, right? Something's going to happen this morning. I woke up and I couldn't move my head. <laughs> Praise the Lord for that, Bill. Anyway, number five, when dealing with people, 
Develop the art. Develop. It takes a while to get it. Develop the art of not having an opinion. Now, that's very countercultural today because today it's all about having an opinion. The whole reason social media lives is so you can proclaim to the world your opinion and criticize the idiots who don't share your opinion. And we just get so opinionated about everything all the time. Lower that. Stop. Try to have, develop the art of not having an opinion. I share this with married men all the time. People say, what's the best advice for married men? And I've shared this with you before. Develop the art of not, not having an opinion. So, Pastor, don't you have opinions? Yeah. I try not to share them with her. <laughs> Why? I find life is happier if I don't share. <laughs> shut up, Mark. Just shut up. I say this to myself all the time whenever I have an opinion. And you know what? On occasion, I will share my opinion. <coughs> Doesn't usually go well. <laughs> now, guys, you can either be right or you can be happy. Rarely can you be both. All right, I choose to be happy. Hey, it takes a while to get it. Just you're walking around on an opinion about every, and some, some of you guys have opinions about where the chair is. Who cares? She wants to move the chair. Let her move the stupid chair. I don't want the chair there. Really? Don't have an opinion. Just relax a little bit. Honestly, it's got to be exhausting to be some of y'all. <laughs> People have opinions about every little freaking thing and always arguing about every little thing. Stop. Let's say it can be with women. I mean, just everybody relax a little bit. Everything doesn't have to be exactly some way for you to be happy. If you do that, I promise you, you will be miserable. Number one, enjoy what you have. Even if it's just a cardboard box, make it the best cardboard box you got. Cut people slack. Don't be overly affected by what's going around you. Lower your expectations for people in your life. Not too low, but man, don't put it so high. that you, If you put it so high, you're always going to be disappointed with your kids. You'll always be disappointed with your in-laws. You'll always be disappointed with your, your boss, your employee. I mean, it's, life's going to drive you crazy. And then when dealing with people, try to develop the art of not having a very strong opinion. And I don't care if it's politics. It's, look, and everybody has an opinion. But relax a little bit. You get around to somebody who doesn't agree with you, life will not end. It just won't. You know, I got my political opinions. My mother-in-law has absolutely the opposite of political opinions than I do. And I love the woman. She's wonderful. We get along great. We both think we're full of crap, but we get along great. <laughs> you know, and we don't argue about that stuff. And it's just so what? You can still love people who think differently from you. You do these things, you will find out that you will start to learn the secret to be content no matter what your circumstances. Amen. We're going to turn our time to our time of communion this morning as we bring our service to an end. This is when we point to what all of this is about. Jesus Christ dying on the cross for the sins of the world. Jesus allowed his body to be brutalized and broken so we could be healed. He allowed his blood to flow so he could wash away our sins. And this is what we reflect on when we take communion about the body and the blood of Christ who makes salvation and forgiveness of sins possible in our lives. And the Bible says before we do this, we should pause and examine ourselves. So I'm going to ask everybody to bow your heads with me as I pray a prayer of forgiveness over all of us as we examine our own hearts. Heavenly Father, before we partake of the bread and the cup this morning, and in obedience to the scriptures, we pause now to examine ourselves. If we've sinned against you in any way, thought, word, or deed, by what we've done, by maybe what we've left undone. If we haven't loved you with our whole heart, if we've not loved our neighbors as ourselves, for the sake of your beloved son, Jesus, who gave himself as a sacrifice for our sins, we ask you, have mercy on us and forgive us of our sins. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life that we might delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. And as our heads are bowed and people are reflecting, maybe you're here this morning saying, you know, I've never really done this. I've never really surrendered my life to Jesus. You can do that right now. 
Just in your own words, ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and to forgive you of your sins so you can experience the joy of knowing Christ. Amen. All right, I'm going to ask the ushers to go ahead and pass out the communion this morning. Just take the bread and the wine. Outside ring is grape juice if you don't want wine. But don't take it right away. Just hold it, and we'll take communion all together after everyone has been served. There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide. Where all the love I've Comes like a flood, comes flowing down. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in awe of you. I'm in awe of you. Where your love ran red and my sin. Washed white, I owe all to you. I owe all to you, Jesus. There's a place where sin and shame are powerless. peace with God and forgiveness where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood comes flowing down at the cross at the cross surrender my life. I'm in all of you. I'm in all of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white. I owe all to you. I owe all to you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the bread and the wine that we partake of this morning. And we ask that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would sanctify these elements, make them to be to us the body and the blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and said, Take this and divide it among you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's all stand together and join in the song. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in all of you. I'm in all of you where your love ran red and my sin washed white. I owe all to you. I owe all to you. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender.
be seated. If this morning was the first time in your life you ever took the moment and asked Christ to come into your life, I have a book I'd love to give you. It's called New Beginnings. It'll answer questions about faith and getting to know God in your life. If you stop by the guest services counter and just say, hey, can I get a copy of that book? They'll give you one absolutely free. Or you can fill that out on the guest services thing and uh, we'll mail it to you. Those of you watching uh, at home, you can go to our website, celebrationchurch.tv, and uh, you'll see a button there that says Faith at Home. And I said yes to Jesus. Click that and a form will pop up and you can uh, give us your name and address and we'll mail, mail you the book again at no charge. Uh, or if you're overseas, you can uh, just give us your email address at the same place and we'll send you a link where you can download it onto your e-reader. Again, all at, at no charge. We just want to be able to help you in any way we can. There's a lot of people that are part of the Celebration Church family that are not here and don't even come uh, or even live in Green Bay. We meet them all the time. We were just in, uh, where were we? <laughs> Dayton, Ohio. And met several couples that came. So, you know, we, you're our church. We watch you all the time. We're part of this. Uh, so we're very blessed, all these people that are out there. And uh, we want to be able to help them in any way that we can. And by the way, if you do need any help, whether you're here or there, uh, you can reach out to me with any concerns, uh, requests that you might have. Just send me an email, Pastor Mark at celebrationchurch.tv. It comes directly to me, no one else, and we'll do our best to try and respond to it and minister and be a blessing to you. All right, let's all stand together as we close this morning in prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray you would so draw our hearts to you, so guide our minds, so fill our imaginations, so influence our wills, that we might be wholly yours, utterly dedicated to you. And then use us, we pray, as you will, and always to your glory and the welfare of your people. And Lord, I pray, teach us to be content. Help us, Lord, to learn the secret, knowing that we can do all these things through Christ who gives us strength. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. God bless you. Have a great week. See you next Sunday morning. Bye-bye. When night has fallen, when fear is coming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. I've decided I'm not giving up, because you won't give up on me. You won't give up on me. Your love is holding on. You have